look at making a fractional antenna. Now I've already uh, knocked a prototype up here just to see how well it worked before I built the, uh, the actual piece. Now what I've done, I've just got a piece of, uh, a piece of board, I've uh, made the, uh, the antennas, bent them to the correct shapes and the correct angles and then we've just connected a bit of uh, coax to it which then we'll plug into the, um, the inlet and we get a pretty good signal. In fact we get full signal strength off this and we get full um, signal quality. Now all I've done basically, I've just mounted this on a wall facing the, um, the same direction as the antennas are pointing. Um, so this is basically pointing towards where the signal's coming in and um, I'm getting a pretty good signal off it. Now as you can see this isn't very sightly, it's not very uh, outdoor friendly because it's only uh, a bit of chipboard which will get wet, spread and fall apart. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to build this now onto a piece of plastic and make it uh, a permanent thing and, um, and I might bring the cable in from the back so that you don't see this, this piece down the middle here. Um, all you'll see is a connection either, what I might do actually is bring this through to the back and then I can connect on the back with the cable and then you won't see that unsightly bit. All you'll see is the, uh, the whiskers for the antenna and the, uh, the plastic sheet. Um, so I've got a template now that I've uh, that I managed to find on the internet for this particular aerial. I was uh, going to start drawing it and I thought I'll just have another search and I managed to find a site with the template on. So I'll put the links in the description for the uh, for the templates and things. Uh, this is the template that I've been working with. And if you can see that. And basically that is the layover template for the, uh, for the antenna. So for instance, you've got that and that's basically all your hold positions and the correct bending pattern. So what we'll do now, we'll get on the bench and um, we'll, uh, we'll bend these whiskers into the correct shape and we'll show you um, how we did that. Uh, and the, the best and easiest way to do it so that they all look the same and they're all the same size. Okay, so we're on the bench now. So what we've, we've got, we've got our template and I've got about two metres here of um, 1.5 millimetre twin and earth cable. Um, so basically the first thing we need to do is strip this out and the easiest way with twin and earth is to get a pair of side cutters like so nip into the end I split the ends like so and you're left with the centre copper core now all we need to do now is grab hold of that and pull it back and as we pull back what will happen is we'll start to strip the cable I'll just keep pulling on that So we've stripped it all and we're left with a one millimetre uh, copper cable which is the uh, the earth cable on, on the uh, twin and earth because um, it's normally half the size of the uh, conductors which are 1.5 so if you had a 2.5 cable you'd have a 1.5 millimetre uh, earth cable in this case we've got a 1.5 millimetre um, uh, power cables or live cables and the earth cable is a one mil so this is one mil now we will use a bit of this we'll use this just for linking the uh, the two bits together but for the rest of it we'll be using the 1.5 which is uh, still in the center here so we'll just split those out that one and all we do just peel those out of there like so and we're left with two meters now of the conductor cables which these are 1.5 
So then what we need to do now, we just need to um, figure our length out. Now roughly, I'm only going to rough this out. I'm just going to give a bit extra, like so. And we're going to sort of round to there, round to there, 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 there. And a bit extra. So we're looking at about that length, roughly, just um, guesstimation. If you want it to be more accurate and give it exact uh, lengths and things you could do. Now I'm not really that concerned about uh, these being exact because what I can do is after I've bent them I can trim the ends up to make them fit. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to cut four pieces of this of the same, uh, roughly the same length and then what we're going to do, we're just going to strip the uh, the insulator off the conductor. Let's see if that one there, that's a bit shorter that one, so we'll just grab another piece of this one. And roughly chop that off to about the same length. So there's our four conductors, so all I need to do now is just strip those out. Now the way I strip these out is I use a blade. And I just run a blade down the um, down the insulator. I can find it. Here it is. It's just a uh, razor blade, single razors. And all I do is away from yourself into the material and just pull it, pull it back, turn it round, and again pull it towards yourself. And effectively what you've done there, I'm going to grab that end piece out, like so, there we go, and there we have bare copper. So I'll do this to the uh, the other three, and then we'll come back and have a look at bending it into the correct shapes. Right, so we've got the... Um, the copper stripped out now and we've got our four conductors that we're going to be using now what I did I printed uh, two of these templates off and what I've done I've cut one of these out and I've then got to nailed it to a board so what I've done basically I've cut that pattern out I've laid it onto the board and I've tacked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pins into it. And if you can see that there, you can see put that sideways on. I've got seven pins sticking out. And what I've done, I've nailed those to each point and I've just nailed them just on the inside of the point. So for each point, it's just on the inside. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bend the shape that we require so I'm going to get my copper and I'm going to put it at the top roughly in the center so we're going to start bending on this top pin the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to bend it round and I'm going to come past so we're now on the inside of this pin and again we come round and past so we're now on the outside of this pin then we come round and we bring it past that one and we're now on the inside again and that gives us our first half a shape and then we do the same again on this side is we're going to go we're going to keep it tight bend it past pick up the inside pin there and then bend it past pick up the outside pin we're going to bend it past pick up the inside pin and just bring it roughly into that shape and then we can just lift those off and there we have a perfect shape with the right uh, angles and the right degrees of bends and uh, we continue that now with for the uh, for the other three so roughly halfway and again bend it in past and round in past and round in past and round 
same with this keep it tight in past them round in past them round and again let's lift him off off the pins and there we have two and again halfway And the good thing about using a template like this is you can bend anything to a shape by doing this method. Um, for instance, if you wanted to bend uh, a piece of flat uh, sheet metal or something, what you could do is you could put your pins in that shape and then it would be, allow you to bend at each point and, and get the correct shape that you need. Um, so yeah, so we'll do the, uh, the four, that's three, and we've got one more left to do. And you can see how easy it is it's just a case of following the lines and just bending on the on the pins and that will give you the shape that you need like so okay so we'll get rid of the uh, the bending board that we're using and as you can see now we've got our four templates our four templates, our four um, conductors bent into the correct shapes. And if we just lay this onto the um, onto the drawing, you can see that they're uh, pretty close, and they do need trimming up a bit. Like so. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to connect the aerials together now so we want to connect this conductor to this conductor and the same with this one we want to connect this conductor to this conductor now the way it's showing it it's showing it to screw the conductor to the board at this point so screw it there screw it there screw it there and screw it there now what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, do it another way what I'm going to do I'm going to put a conductor between the two and I'm going to put a loop in the middle so that we can connect at one point so we connect here and here and that's the only connections we need whereas the way this has been done it's connecting one two three four connections and then you've got another two connections in the middle where you connect your cables to so that's six connections now the way I'm doing it we only need two connections so what I'm going to do now I'm going to get a piece of uh, this one mill that we had and I'm going to cut a piece to go between the two pieces but I'm also going to put a loop in the middle so to do that what I'm going to use is uh, is a bit of flat uh, a bit of flat bar a bit of round bar solid round bar like so and all I'm going to do I'm just going to put that in the vise like so and I'm just going to bend the cable round it to give me the the eyelet that I need for this center piece so I'll do that now and then we'll come back and um, solder them up. Okay, so we've got our solid bar. All I'm going to do, I'm just going to mount this in the vise. Like so. And then I'm just going to get a piece of, uh, piece of this copper. I'm going to trim a piece off just slightly longer than uh, what's needed. So I'll just chop two of those off. Roughly the same length. As I said, a little bit more than what I needed. If you wanted to be exact and measure it exactly, so you have less um, waste, that's entirely up to you. Uh, I'm not really fussed about the the extra waste that we're going to get. So we just bend it round like so, slide it off. And as you can see, that gives us our, our loop that we want. And the same again with the other piece which I did cut and I've put down oh, done that then. There it is. the same again with this piece just in the center roughly just bend it round the, uh, the the round bar and there you have it now I'll just show you another little trick here whilst uh, whilst we're on it just so that you can see if you've got copper uh, wire or copper 
cable or anything like that and you've got let's just mash that up a little bit you've got kinks and stuff in it like so and you want to get those out the best way to do that is to get a piece of uh, round bar attach it to something in a vice or something like that the bigger the bar the better because you'll get a, a more of a rounded um, effect on it and all you do is rub the copper backwards and forwards keeping it taut like so and as you can see all those kinks have come out now there is still just a little one there but it's a lot better than it was so if you ever wanted to straighten cable that's been mashed up or anything like that that's the way to do it, just run it across a, uh, a piece of round bar or a piece of round tubing and it will take the uh, take the uh, the nicks and the um, the kinks out of the cable. Okay, let's go back onto the bench. Okay, so we've got our um, conductors all done now. And we've got our pieces that we've uh, just put an eyelet on if you like and they're going to be soldered now to those like so so that that's in the center and the same again with this one we're going to do the same with this one we're just going to solder that onto those like so so that those eyelets are in the center okay so my iron's up to temperature now and we're ready to solder just got to keep an eye on it because I've got um, a problem with this uh, soldering iron at the minute the, uh, the temperature sensor on it keeps coming up throwing up an error and then it uh, it just cuts out and loses its heat uh, but it's up to temperature now and it's showing it as it should be uh, I could do with a bigger tip on here let's just see how we go with this I should have put a bigger tip on really I've only got a, a small tip on but let's just see how we uh, how we do well, the first thing I want to do I'm just going to uh, just put a little bit of solder to the uh, to the ends heat into the copper, so there you go, so I've just tinned the ends there, now all I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, put that in the right place, like so, I'm just going to put um, something with a bit of weight on it, just to uh, hold it in place so something like that I'll just keep that in place whilst I just uh, tap these ends so how long we're doing I'm just going to apply a bit of heat and a little bit of solder same again for this one like a bit of heat and solder and that's the first half done so there's our first half let's move that out of the way so there's our first half done all soldered up and uh, all we need to do now is just trim the uh, the ends off so I'm just going to trim the excess off here just to make it look a bit tidier and the same with these ends here just roughly nip them to the points and as you can see there's our first half of the uh, the antenna 
Now we do the same again for the other side and uh, I'll do that now and then we can uh, look at mounting it. Okay, so we've soldered the other end up now. And they're a little bit out of shape but that's nothing uh, we can't just bring those back into line. Same with that. Let's bring it all back into line. So there we have it. So that's the uh, the antennas done, and they will sit. They will sit on the piece of paper. So they will sit like so. on the plastic back. Now it does show on some of the designs a reflector on it so what you can do you can put a reflective sheet behind the whiskers and that will deflect any signal back to the whiskers. Now what I found is that I didn't actually need to do that uh, but if you wanted to what you could do you could line the back of the plastic with silver foil or a mesh or something like that to act as a reflector but in this particular case I didn't need to. Um, so what I'll do now, I'll get these mounted onto the uh, onto the plastic, uh, onto the plastic, and then we can connect it up, and then we can see what uh, what the signal quality is like. Okay, so we're ready to mount this on the uh, on the plastic. Now what I've got here, I've just got a sheet of uh, plastic uh, 4B8. Uh, all we're going to do. We mount these onto there like so. And then we're going to connect the uh, the cable to it. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to uh, you can use the template for this if you want to. I'm just going to bang this sort of equally in the centre. Now this is plastic, it's um, a silver plastic. Uh, and it is sprayable and paintable. So there's our mounting points, so all we need to do now is to drill two holes in there and, um, and then we can uh, connect this up. Now you can either rivet it or screw it, I'm just going to put a little pilot hole through here and I'm going to put some uh, self tapping screws in. Okay, so we're ready to uh, to attach these now. And as I say, you can either attach your cable to the front or the back. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. I'm just going to uh, I'm going to drop two self tappers in um, and see what that. Uh,
Okay, so there you have it. All we need to do now is connect the uh, the cable to it, um, and then we can mount that and uh, have a look how well it works. Now, as I say, I think I'm going to mount the uh, the cable to the back, and all I will do there for this, I'll just drop. As you can see, I've got the two terminals coming through here. I've got the two terminals coming through here, and all I'm going to do, I'm just going to drop a couple of eyelets onto there, and um, and connect them to these these two terminals and then the cable will run down the back so basically all you will see is that with a bit of cable coming out of the bottom which if you wanted to you could come back entry through a wall so you'd come through the back and you wouldn't see any cable but in this case where it's got to run what I'm going to do I'm going to run the cable down the back like so and then obviously all you're going to see is that cable coming out the bottom there like that. So I'll uh, I'll connect the uh, the coax up now, and, um, and then we'll have a look see what uh, what the signal quality is like. Okay, so that's it mounted to the wall now and connected. Uh, so all we need to do now is plug it in the other end, and we'll see what the uh, the video quality is like. Okay. So we're going to uh, fire up HD TV player, uh, which is Blaze Video, uh, which is what I use for this. Um, and we're just running off a uh, off a TV dongle into a PC now. So um, the aerial's all connected up outside. Uh, I just need to plug it in this end. So we'll just let this uh, this boot up or fire up, and then we can see what the signal quality is like. Okay, so as you can see it's showing no signal, so what I'll do now, I'll just uh, plug the end of this, let's just try another channel actually, well, it's not going to give us a signal is it, because we've got no aerial plugged in. So there's BBC One, and we have nothing, so right, okay, so I'll plug the, uh, the aerial in now, so I'll just connect that in. Okay, and there you go. Now then, this is the uh, the signal, and we've got the signal and picture quality. So let me just zoom into that, see if we can see it. Having problems focusing there. Zip that out just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, as you can see, we've got full um, signal strength and full signal quality. So I'm quite impressed with that aerial. That's a fractional antenna, quite simple to build, dead easy, and inconspicuous. You can hide them. Now, what I'm going to do with that one, I'm going to actually paint it white, I think, so that it all blends in and you won't even notice if you walk past it, I don't think. So uh, that's how to make a fractional antenna. If you like my videos, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you hit that subscribe button, you'll get updates as and when we put new videos up. So thanks for watching. My name's Darren. We'll see you again.